the millennium, millianum, kilia eter, thousand years. The Bible is uh, just full of information about everything. We're in, going to study from Zechariah, the 14th chapter right now. Now we're going to come up to the battle, battle of uh, Gog and Magog. The battle of Gog and Magog and the battle of Armageddon are not the same battles at all, and they're 1,000 years apart. They, uh... When you want to destroy Israel today, you're wanting to slap Jesus in the face. In the uh, 13th chapter, Zechariah, we see at the end of the tribulation period, this takes place. Or actually in the middle of the tribulation period right here. This is when Israel was born again right there. And he told them before he left, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed and holy is he that came in the name of the Lord. And this is where it takes place. In the 12th and 13th chapter. Now this is at the middle of the tribulation period and then at the battle of Armageddon. It's actually Armageddon. Har in the front of there is the mountain of slaughter. The mountain of slaughter, Har Mageddon. Now, Har Mageddon takes place at the end of the tribulation period before the millennial reign. But I want you to get these two things completely separate in your mind. Now, Israel has been born again now. Israel is in the land for 1,000 years, but this is what predated all of that. What got them there? The Lord will save the tents of Judah, first in order, the glory of the house of David, and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem may not be magnified above Judah. In that day the Lord will defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and the one who is feeble among them in that day will be like David, and the house of David will be like God, like the angel of the Lord before them. The angel of the Lord basically is Jehovah. And it will come about in that day that I will set about to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. Woe to Iran, Saudi Arabia, Lebanon, all of those nations today. Woe. This is going to be the end of this situation. This is what's going to be. Right now we're coming up to this period of time. We're not through the rapture yet. We're not in the middle of the tribulation. <laughs> but this is what's going to happen at that time. I will set about to destroy all nations that come against Jerusalem. And I will pour out on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace. For in grace you have been saved through faith and that is not of yourself. It's the gift of God. And the supplications so that they will look at me whom they have pierced that's at the cross of Calvary, right here. Whom they appear, and they will mourn for him as one mourns for his only son, and they will weep bitterly over him like the bitter weeping over the firstborn. In that day, there will be a great mourning in Jerusalem, like the mourning of Ahad Berimamon in the play of Megiddo. And the land will mourn, and every family by itself, and the family of the house of David by itself, and their wives by themselves, and the house of Nathan by itself, and the wives by themselves, and the family of the house of Levi by itself, and the wives of that by themselves, and the family of the Shemites by itself, and for the wives of themselves, and all the families that remain, every family by itself, and the wives, every individual will mourn because they see the world is coming down on their heads. Then, he said, Jesus said, you will not see me again to say, blessed and holy is he that came in the name of the Lord.
Verse number seven. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd. Against the man, my associate, declares the Lord of hosts, Jehovah Savio. Strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. That's what happened at the cross of Calvary. His church scattered, the people ran. Come about in the land, declares the Lord, that two parts will be cut off and perish, but the third will be left. Two thirds of Israel will die. That's in the tribulation period. And I will bring the third part through the fire and refine them like silver refined and test them like gold is tested and they will be called by my name or they will call on my name and I will answer them and I will say they are my people and they will say the Lord is my God. Now, what happened here before the tribulation period, we're talking about the tribulation, or not the tribulation, but before the, the millennial reign, this all took place. Okay? Behold, a day is coming for the Lord will, when the spoil will be taken and you will be divided among them. And I will gather the nations against Jerusalem to battle and the city will be captured and the houses plundered and the women ravished and half of the city will be exiled but the rest of the people will not be cut off from the city. And the Lord, will go, the Lord will go forth and fight against the nations as when he fights on the day of that battle. And in that day his feet will stand on upon the Mount of Olives. This is the second coming of Jesus in glory. He came here to his own. He raptured them so he could bring the tribulation to period upon the nation of Israel and of course upon the world because of what they've done against Israel. Every nation will be judged according to what you've done to Israel. And Israel is not the church. The church is the church and Israel is Israel. There's no replacement theology in this. His feet will stand on the Mount of Olives in front of Jerusalem to, on the east and the Mount of Olives will be split in the middle from the east to the west and that's where that great valley, the valley of Megiddo, Harmagon, Harmageddon. A large valley Half of the mountains will be moved towards the north and the other towards the south. And you will flee by the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains will reach to Aziel. And you will flee just as you fled before the earthquake in the days of Isaiah, the king of Judah. And the Lord my God will come, and all the holy ones with him. Revelation 12, 1 through 16. And Revelation the 19th chapter, verse 11 onward. And it will come about in that day that there will be no light and the luminaries of the will dwindle. Now this is talking about in the tribulation period, this battle is different than the other one. For it will be a unique day known to the Lord, neither day nor night. And it will come about that at evening time there will be light. At night when there's supposed to be darkness will be light. And it will come about in the day that living waters will flow out of Jerusalem, half of them toward the eastern sea, and the other half toward the western sea. And it will be a summer as well as winter. And the Lord will be king over all the earth. And in that day, the Lord will be the only one and his name the only one. And the land will be changed into the plan from Geba to Ramon, south of Jerusalem to Jerusalem, which will rise and remain on its site in Benjamin Gate as far as the place of the first gate and the corner gate from the tower of Hanel to the king's wine press. And the people will live in it and there will be no more curse. And Jerusalem will dwell in security for all of that thousand years. A thousand years. Now, for one thousand years, there will be peace in the earth. For one thousand years, there will be total, pure justice in the earth. Many people believe that David will be on his throne representing Jesus Christ on the earth, ruling from Jerusalem, that all the nations will come to them and offer sacrifices and offerings to the Lord of all of their produce. And then Revelation, the 20th chapter, verses 7 through 9. We have another battle. Now, 
evil spirits and demons are, demons basically are, are a spirit without a form or body, or they're unclothed spirits. They dwell in land. If there's evil spirits around a house or some area, evil spirits are very territorial. They don't want to leave. They want to be there. That's their land. They've staked it out. They've homesteaded it. That's what happened in the in the, the demonic casting it out in the time of Jesus. Now, those people that fought against Israel basically <clears throat> were Islamic countries. Now, these countries are going to be subjugated and they will they will serve the Lord, what's left of them, for 1,000 years. But then, and in this 1,000 years, there is no... Satan is put, put away. He's chained up. All the demons are taken out. The demons have been turned loose on the earth during the tribulation period, and then they're chained up. They're put in the bottomless pit. And they can't get out. They don't have any influence on the earth. But that land is fertile for demonic activity. And at the end of this tribulation period, Satan's going to be turned out and to go right back to those nations where he empowered the people to do things. When you see a leader come up that is contrary to God, which we've seen a lot of them lately, and you see them stand up, he or she, whatever it is, and you see them basically fight against Israel, coddle the enemies of Israel, the powers behind them are the powers of Satan. That's the way it is. It's the powers of Satan are behind them. The world grabbers, as it said in Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Now, Let's go all the way from 20, 20, verse number 1, and we'll look at this here. And I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the great key of the abyss and a great chain in his hand. Now this, Satan has been bound for 1,000 years during the millennium. And he laid hold of the dragon, the serpent of old. Now these are all the titles of Satan. The dragon, the serpent of old, who is the devil, who is Satan, the one bound for a thousand years. They bound him for a thousand years. He, he has no more influence on the earth. Called him the dragon. The, what we might call the, the, the great sea monster, or the great dragon of old. When Aaron threw down his rod, it came, became a le leviathan. It became a dragon. When Janice and Brandmies threw down their rods, they became dragons, not snakes, dragons. Tanin. And they were very powerful supernatural creatures, but God's creature, created creature, overcome them. His neck. His dragon overcome their dragon, Leviathan. And the devil, the opposer, the destroyer, Satan, the one who opposes, the serpent of old, as in the garden. Bound him for a thousand years and threw him into the abyss. That means abyss means ah, that's no beast bottom, the bottomless pit, and shut it down and sealed it over him that he should not deceive the nations any longer until the thousand years were completed. After these things, metatate. After these things, he must be released for a short time. And I saw thrones and they sat upon them. And judgment was given to them, and I saw the souls of those who have been beheaded because of the testimony of Jesus. Now these are all going to be resurrected at that period of time. These are the tribulation saints, okay? Because the other ones have already been resurrected. And those who had not worshipped the beast or his image. Now remember, the beast, in Islam, the beast is a wonderful being created by all. The Bible says the beast is a horrible beast created by Satan. 
and he had not received the mark upon their forehead. Now, Islam, they want the mark of the beast. There is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is his messenger or apostle. That mark, that blasphemous mark, there is no God, there is no Jehovah but Allah, and he has no companion, no Jesus, no son, and Muhammad is his prophet, not Jesus. And upon their hand they became, they came to life and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. And the rest of the dead did not come until the thousand years were completed. And this is the first resurrection. This is the first resurrection here. We had a resurrection of all the saved and the church here. Now we have the first resurrection here of all of these. And I believe even back here that all of the saints from Adam onward. Blessed and holy is the one who has taken part in the first resurrection. Over these saints the second death has no power, but they will be priests of God, of Christ, and will reign with him for a thousand years. These are tribulation saints, a very special place. And now after the thousand years has come, been completed, Satan will be released for a short time from his prison. And he will come out and deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog. Gog and Magog are Islamic countries. So we're not talking about Russia. These countries are Islamic countries. To gather them together for war, and the number of them was like the sand of the seashore. They multiplied very greatly. A woman could have a thousand children in the millennium just like they did over here. How many children did Eve have? Probably a thousand. And they came up on the broad plain of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints, the beloved city. They're going to come against Jerusalem. Again, against Jerusalem. Jerusalem is God's land that he gave to his people, Israel. The beloved city. And fire came down from heaven and devoured them. And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire. And brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are also. And they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Yon, ton, yon, ton, yon. And now we have the great white throne judgment. But that's not part of this lesson. That's here. Right over here, the great white throne judgment. 2 Peter 3, 10 through 13, Revelation 21 and 1, 1 Corinthians 2 and 9. And Revelation 20 and verse 11. Matthew 25 and 35. Mark 13, 31. Luke 16, 17. And 21, 33. And 2 Peter 3, 10 and 11. That's where we're going to go the next time. I hope you have learned something from these. I hope you know that the, the difference between Armageddon, which takes place here, and the, and the Battle of Gog and Magog over here. A lot of people attribute Gog and Magog to Russia, but that's not Russia. It is over there in the Islamic countries, right in Asia Minor, in that area in there. Our Father, we send this message out for your honor and glory. Please use it. Please open people's hearts to your word. Help them to understand. Help them to understand where we are today and what we're standing against today. Father, please forgive me.